Hi, so today we will be talking about the uh, fabrication process of uh, Algan and Hemd. I was uh, going to start the video tour of the lab, but I realized that explanation is due because this process is slightly different from what we usually do in uh, silicon based transistors. So, to start it simple, you just go get or, well, grow your own wafers. Then you etch it by ICP to break the alkan layer, so the devices are not connected to each other. Then uh, you add source and drain by just atomic metallization, usually it's titan, aluminum, molybdenum and gold. Uh, then you just uh, bake it, like 800 something degrees for a few seconds. Then you add the gate or you add the isolation, uh, not the isolation, insulation layer between the gate and an alkan, which is also a possibility. Then you just passivate everything and your device is basically ready. However, however, if you go to a fuller diagram written in Japanese, as you can see, this is a bit more complex because it uh, requires you to add photoresist, to develop a photoresist, to actually add some uh, metals, then to remove the metals which is on top of the photoresist, then bake it, then add another photoresist, <laughs> uh, develop it again, add another metal, uh, remove the metal, then like it's sort of ready, but actually there are a few more steps, so we will just uh, go as we go. Change of scenery. Now we are in a clean room. Uh, moreover, we are in the yellow room, as you can see by this uh, boron filtered lights above me, which are completely yellow, and to work with photoresist, but we're not going to use them right now. Right now I'm going to show you how to prepare the wafers. So first, all gloves, face mask, uh, not to contaminate the wafers, it's first. Uh, actually, it's really easy to work with uh, gallium nitride and aluminum gallium nitride, because it is impossible to diffuse and dope it. What I'm meaning about that, for example, here's the silicon wafer. And if I touch it with my bare hands, the sodium from the skin will infiltrate the silicon and fucking dope it. So if I touch the neutral silicon, it will become like sodium doped silicon, which is actually shit because it's not good for you <laughs> to have the, this kind of unpredictable doping in your devices. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why before working on it, we will be preparing the uh, place with ethanol. It's not really necessary for uh, aluminum gallium nitride as I said, but well, it never hurts to make everything clean. So, we are going to clean the pinset, we're going to clean the ruler. Yes, good. And then I'm going to use another clean wipe to put our wafers. The reason we do this, because this, this wafer is um, silicon carbide, insulating silicon carbide uh, with, uh, if it actually grown, GAN and aluminum gallium nitride. Well, first, you can see it's transparent. That's why we marked it with the marker, so we don't lose the track of which side it is. Second, this full wafer costs probably the same as my used car. <laughs> so it's really wasteful to use it whole. <clears throat> yeah, so it's just here to show you actually. Uh, there's also this type of wafer, which is uh, a bit whitish. It's because it's only single side polished and it makes it really easy to work with because you will never make a mistake which side it is. Yeah, and this, you can see the reflection, it's really clear on this side and matte on this side. This is uh, gun al gun epitaxial growth on sapphire. Sapphire, uh, strangely enough, is cheaper <laughs> than silicon carbide in this kind of applications. So this maybe costs like up to a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand, per pack of uh, this kind of wafers. Also, there is uh, this beast. 
you can see that it's uh, coming in a really small package and also it's really hard to see but it has sort of yellow tint to it it's really hard to see in this kind of light you need to be outside to see it properly this is because this small wafer which has all been already cut by the way the usual device that we will be constructing from this kind of wafers is maybe this big maybe half of this even this is standalone gallium nitride this shit costs like like a new car <laughs> so yeah using using this very very sparingly and today actually I want to optimize some processes on uh, silicon so I took this uh, p-doped silicon wafer which is also one side polished see how it like makes a hue and here all clear like a mirror yeah so I'm going to be cutting this one oh yeah by the way polished side down is the cutting way give me a second I will just clean up uh, clean up the wafers uh, so I don't accidentally put any trash on them <clears throat> Oops. it's really hard and unusual to work with the uh, with the camera on usually I don't do that also on some wafers there is the uh, serial numbers and stuff and I don't want to show them just in case I mean I can totally do I have no restrictions on that but I just don't want to so here here we go uh, to cut this actually we have a few ways to approach it So the first way to, is to, to approach it is uh, really thin, see, focus, focus, here, really thin uh, diamond pen. You will not be able to see it, but there is uh, actually artificial diamond on the end of it. But the problem is that it's not really suitable for aluminum gallium nitride, since uh, this type of pen is really brittle in the end here. Not really brittle, it, it will just bend, you will not be able to cut sapphire with this. So, this is only for silicon, actually, for silicon and uh, uh, freestanding gallium nitride, which is uh, quite brittle by itself. Uh, sapphire and silicon carbide I, are really sturdy, so we use this kind of pens. So, just a, looks like normal ball pan, but it has the diamond bit on the end. And uh, everything else is pretty straightforward, actually. So you just open the pan. This one I will be cutting in four pieces and then putting it in the holder to process later. So as you can see, I'm scratching uh, sides a few more times compared to the center. It's because usually when I start, I start not at the top, but actually some distance from it. So the top doesn't get cut. And also the problem is that when you go to the sides, if you push too hard, it will just break uh, without you controlling the direction of the brake. Yeah. Also the reason I don't really like these small pens is that, well, the positioning is quite a bit harder. Well, if you cut the glass with a diamond in your life, you will know what I mean. And the angle of the of the diamond is uh, not so perfect here. Yeah, and see? You can just bend it with your <laughs> fingers essentially. It's not a really good thing. But it lets you cut really precisely. So not really visible here but no I don't like how it cut I will just use the more sturdy pen and 
Like actually with this kind of sample, it's uh, big. Oh, by the way, we're using silicon for for different uh, evaluation processes and to validate our machinery solely because the silicon is cheap. Uh, this kind of silicon wafer costs maybe 10, 20 bucks. So it's really nothing compared to the price of uh, even the price on gallium nitride not so far, so. See, now you can see the cut. Nice. So, next step is to smash it a bit. So the crack which was on the surface will propagate uh, through the whole wafer. The second trick is to use the clip, paper clip. And there are a few broken ones, but uh, I just like to use a piece of wire from that paper clip and to put it over like this. The, the main trick is that you really don't need a lot of force, so just just like this maybe. But sometimes it just doesn't break. Oh, here you go. You could see the crack and you can hear the crack and now it's clearly cut. Uh, <clears throat> Okay. I want to clip it in four. So here and here. I will just do it uh, in a fast manner. <laughs> Only possible with silicon, by the way. This kind of uh, side pressure cleaving. See? <laughs> if, you do, if you try to do it with silicon carbide or gallium nitride or uh, sapphire even, it will just shatter in thousand pieces. <laughs> so yeah, I have a, I have a holder plate here. I will just uh, put it proper side up in the holder, and I will show you again how to fast cleave the silicon. So your goal is to make a long, even cut the whole way. So you start, you really, st you have to start from the corner. So, so, like this. And then wh when you're going down, like on the bottom, bottom end, you have to press hard. And when, for example, like uh, I can explain it like this. So if this is the side of the wafer, so this is the side of the wafer, like the long one, just imagine it, or actually even better. This is the side of the wafer. And when you go to the side and you want to crack off the small bit here, small portion, so you press really hard and let it slide off the side like this. And then it will crack. And the silicon actually cracks really beautifully like this. No problems whatsoever. Here it is. Uh, actually, I already have uh, the sapphire uh, devices, which are, oh, no, this is not this one. Mm. Okay, so I will just show you the holder. This is the holder of um, another batch of devices, and I already have some prepared. So we will go and etch them with uh, ICP array. After cutting our boards to size, uh, the next goal is to perform the etching of the algon layer, which will be done by inductively coupled plasma reactive ion etching. So the machine I'm going to show you right now. It's a bit loud here, but the machine is uh, this one here. <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the SCADA, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. It has a reactor chamber, the load lock chamber, and uh, the process gases like BCL3 and CL2. Also, we are using argon for internal cleaning and oxygen for uh, oxidation, like uh, oxygen plasma treatment, but uh, it's rarely used mode. So, to load it in, we just need to open the load lock chamber and uh, start loading the samples. This time, it's not the mesa etching, but the whole surface etch. So, it means we will remove all the algon from from the surface of the sample 
which will essentially make it the sapphire gun sapphire with a few microns of uh, gallium nitride on top of it to finalize it and set the process we just need to set the time uh, the etching recipe is number 25 so as I said we need to etch around uh, 30 nanometers of uh, aluminum gallium nitride and for that we need to set the recipe recipe is uh, number 25 the way we control the thickness of the edge is just simply by changing the time so this time we are going to put it on 39 minutes and 00, zero seconds it is roughly equal to 20, uh, 30 31 nanometers of uh, algan edge Yes, and uh, now we need to go to mode, set the mode to 25. Yes, and uh, basically it will uh, perform all those steps automatically. So load lock chamber pump down, loading the wafer into the process chamber, the process itself, the unloading the wafer and the venting the chamber. It will be done automatically. Uh, <clears throat> oh, by the way, uh, towards the process, we can set up the pressure of BCL3, of the CL2, argon, and the powers. Also, it has a lot of steps, so you can do the gradual or fast etchings. And see, like the second step is the main one. So, four SCCM of uh, boron trichloride and uh, one SCCM of uh, <clears throat> chlorine and no argon. To start the process, we just uh, press the run button and it starts pumping down the load lock chamber. So, when the pump down has been finished, the wafer will be loaded inside of the chamber automatically by uh, this uh, manipulation robot. Uh, this uh, white thing resembling a wafer is actually a silicon dioxide plate. And uh, you can see the movement of the wafer inside the chamber as well but it's uh, kind of hard and so in the end it will just uh, unload itself and shut the and shut the valve to the main chamber and now you can see the plasma glowing inside of the main chamber. So the white wafer is uh, the thing that was loaded and on top of it is just the plasma glow. When it's ready, the wafer will unload automatically like this. And then in the end, it will just scream at you. So, this is the last part. Uh, venting of the load chamber. Basically, it will just put it uh, full of uh, nitrogen, I think, from the, <clears throat> from the tank outside. And... Oh yeah, <laughs> basically it measures the pressure here every time and when it's uh, not high enough it will just, uh, well, it will just make it do weight more. Yeah, here it is. So the sequence is done and we can... <coughs> Open it up and unload the samples. Okay, this will be the final part of this uh, wafer preparation video. More like the first step of uh, production video. But I want to talk about just one more thing. And this thing is preparing the holder. When you're transferring the devices between clean rooms or just 
going and taking them to the exhibition or just sending them to another lab in another city, it's really important to know how to pack it. Especially when devices have uh, sensitive photo resist on it and or any sensitive coatings. So we are using this kind of uh, blocks. So it's just uh, extruded plastic block. Uh, they come with a transparent, uh, yellow, or non-transparent coat, non-transparent uh, uh, lids. I'm forgetting my English. Non-transparent lids. Um, we're using the yellow one. It doesn't really matter here. So the first uh, is well, I don't know. If you're not sure what happened to the thing before, wash it in ethanol. <clears throat> so, just stop the inside. The thing is, it's not really that important to clean it. It's just I prefer to avoid some, well, if it was dipped in glue, for example, the ethanol will help you a lot. Okay, and just uh, wait to ethanol to, for, for ethanol to evaporate. Second, this is uh, woven uh, cotton, which comes in like this, clean and green wiper. It's not really a wiper, it's, uh, it's too expensive as a wiper. <laughs> but the main point is that even when you cut it, it does not shed lint. Really important, especially in clean room. So, we will be cutting squares of it to put in the, on the bottom here. So the goal of this is if anything happens that this kind of lint will absorb the power from the board heating. Actually, the way the silicon or well any material shatters is when you hit it with the power that it cannot absorb. What I mean by that is when the hit power in the corner, for example, uh, exceeds the shattering power. So, for example, without the lint, when you drop it on the floor, one uh, side of this um, wafer will collide with the... So, this will collide with the floor, and the wafer, which was suspended in zero gravity, essentially, because it was falling free fall, it will collide with the side of this. And since this is a plastic, the power transfer will be essentially 100%, and it will shatter the corner. If you have the lint, the lint will absorb and spread it, preventing the shattering. So you just drop it in the center. More important part is that you might say, what if it drops on this part <laughs> and we actually have no place to put lint on it? You could, you could, definitely, uh, for example, take a half of it and put it over the top. That's how we ship it to another lab. When transferring inside the same lab, well, usually we don't really care. However, we care about smearing the photoresist. And the solution to that is uh, pretty simple. You just take some tape. This is Copton tape. We use it because it doesn't really leave traces when you remove it. But, well, it doesn't matter. You can use anything. So just... Uh, just make a loop out of the tape like this and add it is essentially a cooking paper it's a waxed uh, small paper and you just add it to the top oh, there's still some alcohol, it's fine it will just evaporate see? and this side is waxed so no glue that you apply to the wafers or the photoresist, which essentially is also in glue, polymer glue, it will not stick to the top, giving you a good transportation medium. 
And to clip it, there's a clip like this. You just put it over the side. And you clip it. That's it. Also, you might be... Uh, no. Wrong marker. I think it's this one. And then you can write something on it. Like P type silicon. Okay, till the next time. Bye.